Welcome back everyone. This time we will learn about the key factors that affect the cost of your Azure services. My name is Adam and welcome back to Azure Fundamentals course. Stay tuned. Today we will learn about key elements that affect the cost of our Azure services. And those elements, so-called factors, are resource types, services, locations, and networking traffic, both ingress and egress. Please note that those are not the only cost-affecting factors. We'll learn about some cost-saving factors in the next episode, but those four will be the key element that will drive the cost of your Azure environment. Let us start with resource types. Resource types is simply the answer to the question, what kind of service do we use? So when you buy a virtual machine in Azure, there are certain metrics that track the usage of your virtual machine resource. For example, when you choose what kind of virtual machine do you want, you specify how much CPU, so how much processor do you want to have, how many cores, how much memory do you want to have, and then those metrics are tracked against the uptime. So for how long did you have that virtual machine with this kind of configuration? And when you buy an SQL database in Azure, metrics are very similar there. So you pay for processor, memory, additionally you pay for storage. And then it's tracked against the uptime. So how much storage, how much memory and CPU did you use for how long? But there are other services with much more flexible pricing models, like Azure Functions, for instance. We've talked about Azure Functions in our serverless episode. So it's a service that allows us to execute small pieces of code and only pay for that. So you pay for how many times did you execute your pieces of code and how much memory did those executions consume? But if you bought Azure Storage account, for instance, then the price consists of how much storage are you consuming, what is the access tier for this data, and how many operations are you doing on the storage account. In case of Azure Logic Apps, the pricing is even simpler. How many actions did you execute? One thing to note is that a resources that are only organizational resources, a logical resources like resource groups are free because they are not a service, they're just logical objects in Azure. So those do not have any kind of cost associated. But what you should remember from the slide is that every resource type have a small metric that is tracking its usage. And this will be your key factor that will affect the final cost of your Azure environment. Therefore, you should always spend time to think what kind of use case do you have, what kind of application are you building, and which are the right resource types for you. Let me quickly switch to something called a pricing calculator. Azure pricing calculator allows you to estimate the cost of your Azure environment before you purchase services. It is available on azuremicrosoft.com website slash pricing slash calculator. In this calculator, you can add products just like you would be purchasing something from online shop. When you do that, you can estimate how much potentially this service will consume before you even make a purchase. For example, if you select Azure storage account, it will be added to your estimate. So you can scroll down and start your estimations using default configuration. So if we would leave this as is, that means we are estimating a purchase of Azure storage account in East US region, this would be a blob storage, performance tier would be standard, the type of storage account would be general purpose version two, and the redundancy would be locally redundant storage, and the default access tier would be hot. And lastly, but most importantly, we're assuming 1000 gigabytes of storage being consumed for an entire month. An Azure calculator will immediately tell us that for a thousand gigabytes in this configuration, we will pay $20.80 a month. And if you scroll further, you will find other factors that affect the cost of your storage account. For instance, the operations that we've talked about previously. And all of those metrics combined will drive the final cost of your storage account. But besides resource types, be aware that different service offerings of Azure also have different price of services associated with them. So when talking about services, we're really talking about what kind of Azure offer do you have? How did you purchase your Azure? As a customer, you have multiple ways to buy Azure from Microsoft. One of the most common ways is buying this through a web portal, where you can get one of many available Azure offer types, like Azure Free, which is great for testing, or pay-as-you-go subscription, where you are billed monthly for your Azure usage. You can also get some Azure credits 
from Microsoft Partner Network or if you have a Visual Studio license. And there's plenty different offer types that you can choose from. Besides that, you can contact Microsoft representative and buy an enterprise agreement. This is agreement between your company and Microsoft. This is a contract that you sign. And lastly, you can buy Azure from a partner of Microsoft, so-called cloud solution providers. And this model in short is called CSP. So depending on which Azure offer type do you have, it will affect two things. One of them is usage rate. So simply the cost of your Azure services and the billing cycle. But the usage rates are changing because when you're purchasing Azure from an enterprise agreement or through CSP, you can negotiate the prices. And if you negotiate any discounts, this discount will be applied for all the services available in your Azure subscriptions. And this will definitely affect the final cost of your Azure environment. But there's one more very important thing when purchasing Azure services. And this is the location of those services. So in which Azure region are our services currently located? So let's imagine a scenario where you purchase Azure Virtual Machine in West Europe region. That virtual machine will have one virtual core and four gigabytes of memory. If you go to Azure pricing calculator, you might see that this virtual machine will cost you 100 US dollars per month. But if you suddenly change region and you will pick exactly same machine with exactly same configuration in North Europe, you might see that the price suddenly differs. This is exact same configuration, exact same resource type on exact same offer, yet the price differs. And you will see that across many different regions in Azure, that as soon as you will start picking the same service, but in different regions, price will be different. And the true answer is a little bit more complex, but we can narrow it down to a simple statement that the cost of running Azure data center differs from region to region. So my advice here is that when you are picking the region for your Azure solution, pick the region that is nearby to your customers. So the latency is small the region that has all the services available that you want to use and the lowest price for those services. It's at least what I do when designing my own solutions. And you will see exactly same thing in Azure pricing calculator. A moment ago, we estimated 1000 gigabytes of storage used on storage count. And that was in East US region. Let us change that region to East US 2, a region that is very close by yet the price suddenly dropped to $18 from 20, which just shows you that proximity of data centers is not that important, but it's hard to say what are the key factors that affect the price. I typically say this is the cost of running data center, which is reflected in the price of the services. And the last factor that affects the cost of your Azure environment is bandwidth. So how much data are we moving to Azure and out of Azure? When you are customers, the first thing that you will do most of the time is migrate to Azure. Therefore, in your company, from your servers, you will want to upload data to Azure Data Center. And this upload is called ingress or otherwise called inbound traffic. This is because this is the in traffic from the perspective of Azure. This is incoming data to Azure Data Center. If you're downloading data from Azure, then we're talking about the egress or so-called outbound traffic, because this is the traffic that is going out of Azure. So what it should be noted is that most of the time in most scenarios, the traffic that is going to Azure is free. So the inbound traffic is free in most cases, but the outbound traffic is not. One of the things that I advise you to do is go to Microsoft pricing page for bandwidth and read about the scenarios when it comes to how bandwidth is priced because there's quite few of them. There are different pricing scenarios for moving data across data centers when moving across different regions in different markets or different continents. So it's something that I advise you to check if you're designing applications that will have their infrastructures scale globally and you will be moving a lot of data across different Azure regions. So let us summarize this. If you're estimating the base cost of your Azure environment, the key factors that you should look at are First of all, resource types. So what Azure services did we purchase and how we will use them? The services itself, but in this case, we're talking about which kind of Azure offer do we have? Do we have any discounts? Do we have any prepaids on this subscription that will affect the final cost of our Azure environment? 
Additionally, we should pay attention to the location of the services. So in which Azure regions did we deploy our services? And besides that, if you're deploying globally scalable applications or infrastructure and will be moving a lot of data, bandwidth is something we should look at because moving the traffic out of Azure data centers typically will have some charges applied. And two more cost affecting factors are directly related to savings. So how to save some money on Azure environment. We'll explore those in the next episode and those are reserved instances and hybrid benefits. They're only applicable in specific scenarios. Therefore, I want to have a separate episode on them alone. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 35 on my website. Feel free to check them out. In the next episode, we'll learn how to reduce the price of our Azure environment. But for today, we're done. My name is Adam. If you like my tutorial, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. For today, that's it. And I hope to see you in the next one. See you.